This time I'm going to show you how to insert a RevNut without an expensive RevNut tool in a bit better quality video. Okay, so the way uh, basically RevNut works is um, this gets inserted into the hole or workpiece that you want to do. And then a bolt of some sort, whether it's with a tool or this method, whichever way, basically goes into this end. It screws in there. And then this gets pulled out and the entire back section of the rivnut gets crushed together so this part with the little splines on them gets crushed together and bulge out now that is on the back side of the plate that goes um, onto the face plate of your rivnut over here and that then holds the rivnut in place and um, this is basically a bolt that it's got this crushable part of it so then you basically insert thread into a plate or a workpiece now the tools can be quite expensive and if you don't have a lot of rivnuts to insert into a project it is kind of unnecessary i feel so an option well there's got two or three ways that i'm going to show you today the first one is i'm going to take this is an m8 rivnut this is obviously an m8 bolt then now the first method would be to take a nut this is also an m8 nut i'm going to put this nut put the rivnut down going to put this tube nut onto the bolt this is a fairly simple idea and screw the bolt all the way through now it is quite important to take a long bolt because the bolt needs to go through the nut and once you insert the rev nut it needs to go far enough on the rev nut in order to go all the way through the rev nut almost now the reason for this is if the nut or the bolt doesn't go all the way through the rev nut it can damage the threads on the inside so it needs to stick out the other side in order to utilize almost all the threads on the inside of the rev nut now another thing with the washers you use for this project is the washers have got to be a good size around the bolt and they've got to fit very good with very little gap between the washer and the bolt once again in the reason for this is if the washer is too big um, it would have a very bad effect um, like I'll show you in the picture that is showing on the screen right now so what I'm going to do is take this bolt with the nut on it put in one and then two washers both of them being a good fit not too small and then take the rev nut and insert or attach the rev nut as well like so you'll see the bolt comes out the end of the row nut so it needs to either come out the end like this or it needs to be very flush in order to use all the threads on the inside of this so what then happens is the with two wrenches i'll basically be holding the back of the bolt steady and then with the other one i'll be turning the nut and this will then basically pull the back side where the thread of the rev nut is it will pull it closer and it will crush this little part which will bulge out and keep this in place so this is the one method now the same bolt it's an m8 bolt i'm going to put on one washer again onto the bolt like this and then after the washer i'm going to put in the tube nut again but this time it's bigger than the bolt so it'll just merely slide over and then after that bolt i'll put on the other washer now this is then followed by the rev nut like this on the end now the idea this time is to put this into the hole where you need to pull it um, and insert this thing this time we're going to be holding the nut steady and basically press this against the surface where you want to put it in so the rev nut doesn't circulate or turn as well and then turn the bolt and this will also be pulling the rev nut closer and crushing the part at the back there now the only downside to this method is it puts um, quite a bit of effort on the threads because as it's pulling the rev nut and crushing it it's also turning in the threads of the rev nut so this method needs to be used very carefully and only if re if you really need to if you can do it the other way the other way would probably be a bit better and uh, a bit strenuous on the rev nut itself and then the third method will be very similar to this one the setup will look exactly the same but i'll show you the method once we get inserting these okay so let's start installing it with the first method now the first one 
is the method I show you beforehand. So in this case, I'm going to take this setup. I'm going to put a ratchet spanner or ratchet wrench over the socket part. So at the top, I'm going to start turning the nut. Now, to start this, it might be a bit on the stuff side. So you'll need to apply some pressure from the back side towards the piece that you're inserting it into. And it'll start a bit on the stuff side. But as soon as it starts moving, you'll see that, or you'll feel that it starts to ease up a bit. So it's a bit easier to turn. And that's when it starts bulging at the back. Like you'll be able to see in the shot that I'm taking from the back side. You'll see that it's starting to bulge. Now this will turn a bit easier and then it'll start turning hard again. Now as soon as it starts turning hard again, almost to the point where you can't turn it anymore, then you'll know it's at the point where it's probably set and you can stop tightening it. Now in order to take this off, I'm merely going to take the nut, take loosen it a slight bit, and then you'll be able to unscrew the bolt like this which is going to be this one like we set it up before I'm going to put this one in the hole as well and um, this time i'm going to be holding the nut in place which is also not got to move or must not move and while i'm holding the nut in place you'll see that i'm pressing it against the surface with the use of that first washer that I put in. And that's to stop the rev nut at the back from turning along with the bolt that I'm turning in front here. So I'm going to hold the nut in place and I'm going to start turning the bolt at the back like this. I'm just try and doing it nicely so you get a good shot of this. And as you turn it, you see the nut is being held steady. It's basically a spacer. But I need to, at the back you'll see that the rev nut is turning if I don't apply enough pressure. This is a bit of a harder one. Maybe I should have gotten a bit of a, a better wrench for this episode. There we go. That one will grip a bit more. And as you once again turn the bolt, you'll see with the footage from the back, that the back is starting to bulge and crash together. up until the point where it doesn't really want to turn anymore i've actually damaged the head of the bolt now so tight i was turning it now see at the back of the, the rev nut as well you'll see the scuff marks and that's as the rev nut was turning inside the plate when i wasn't applying enough pressure towards the plate from the front so that it doesn't turn the rev nut included or as well so let me hold from the front like this and the whole setup will screw out once again like this and once again we'll take another bolt in the back and you'll see that this is a very solid installation and the back you'll see that it's nicely bulged this face is nice and flat and smooth there's no bulges because the washer was not too big so that came out very well so let me just put in all the parts again could be a, a washer, a big nut, or the bigger nut, another washer, and then finally a rev nut once again, like this. Like I showed you before, this is a similar one. Instead of the tube nut, I'm just using a normal rivet nut now, just because I damaged the other bolt, but that is basically what it is. So this time, take the exact same setup. I'm going to hold the nut in place with a wrench again like this against the vise but this time I'm going to use an impact driver with a socket bit in front to turn the bolt in so let's see how that works now that worked quite easily um, it worked better or easier than the nut itself so let me just unscrew the bolt like this and then you'll be able to see that this one went in quite quickly um, but once again this method is not always the safest since you are putting a bit more stress on the threads of the rough nut itself but like you can see at the back it's very solidly crushed against the surface and this is very good installed this is nice and solid it's not going anywhere so these are the three optional method that methods that you do have if you do not have the expensive tool. I mean, this took basically some wrenches. You can use a, 
a ratchet, a socket as well, um, and basically the rivet nuts and some bolts and washers. So this is a really, really simple method. It's really easy to use. Um, once again, I wouldn't recommend this if you're going to be doing a, a lot of rivet nuts. So if you're only doing a few and it's not a regular thing that you do, this is a very good option. So if you like this video and method, give this video a thumbs up. A rivet nut with a better, better, 